What's going on everybody? Welcome to the episode. I know I mentioned I had JCI, which is that two-year inspection due on the Evo, and the day has finally come. I am right now in the inspection line. I paid the $25 fee, and there's about four cars in front of me, and then I'll be able to go through the inspection. I'm kind of winging it right now. They might pass it. I highly doubt it, but if there's anything wrong with the car, then they'll annotate it in the inspection paperwork, and at that point, I know exactly what I need to do or what I need to fix in order to get the JCI for the Evo. So wish me luck. Uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I really don't think it'll pass. Um, I do have the aftermarket headlights. I know they're pretty, pretty picky about everything. I did take the car to Auto Hobby Shop a few weeks ago, and I did put the catalytic converter back on. I took the wheel spacers off. Uh, it does have factory wheels. I mean, even though it looks like an aftermarket body kit, it is the factory Evo kit. So hopefully all goes well. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. So stay tuned. So real quick, <laughs> so I'm in the middle of the inspection. I, I moved around, I'm just waiting to go in here in the bay. Um, but as you can see, I swapped the stock Evo 4 dash while I was waiting in line. I pulled out the Evo 6 dash. You guys can see the speedometer. I tried messing around with it and trying to get it calibrated to go to zero, it just won't go. Maybe you guys might know. However, the Evo 4 one's fine and since I was running a straight pipe, I always had a catalytic converter light right here. And I put the, the stock catalytic converter back on, but the light was still on. So I went ahead and pulled that bad boy out. Check it out, no lights, perfect. And the, uh, the speedometer sitting right at zero, idle is perfect. So definitely a win for me in line in the clutch. I didn't know if they would have dinged me for that, but I didn't want to take the chance. And I had the stock gauge cluster and I've actually never put it in the car. So I was kind of just winging it and it looks pretty good actually i'm gonna stick with it i actually like it over the blue uh, i do like the white and red it kind of goes with the red theme in the car so definitely a win all right so there's a little machine right here that goes back and forth and checks your headlights i think he's just measuring ride height and whatnot pretty thorough i know the headlights are gonna be way off right. now he's checking i believe he's checking for alignment hopefully alignment's not off it does have coilovers All right, so now he's lifting the car and he's gonna check underneath. I'm pretty sure they just knock around and make sure everything is good to go. Kind of like the final step. We'll see how the damage is. I know it didn't pass. I saw him hit it with some red ink, but. right there it's got a little bit of red ink on it he's not a man of many words I will say he's just kind of clicking around kind of nervous that he's not saying a lot so we'll see all right so the uh, the inspector just took off with my Evo and he's just driving around the block checking out the speedometer it's so like I said I swapped it out I don't know if the speedometer works but we'll see but here she comes Ooh, she sounds good though I told him no burnouts You guys won't believe it i thought i was going to have a laundry list i just got the inspection paperwork back and literally minor fixes i can probably try to go back this afternoon and do it so i'm gonna go do that right now uh, let me flip the camera around so he told me protrusion of rotary parts he said my rims are a little bit too wide not my tires my rims which is weird because they are mitsubishi 17 inch factory oz racing wheels they're not aftermarket wheels so i don't understand I can't put skinnier tires on it because the rim is sticking out too far and I don't have the spacers. I took those off. So that's got to get fixed. And then the headlights, which I knew because I put LED headlights on there, I just got to get those adjusted. So I'm going to run. There's a place over here that charge like 15 bucks and I can do that. And then he said um, my shift knob, I don't have the, um, the gear numbers on there, one through five in reverse. And the stock shift knob, I pulled it out of the glove box. I was like, wait, wait, I have it. The top of it's all worn out so i just have to get like a little sticker i might run the auto backs and put a shift indicator number thing somewhere around here so that's a really easy fix and then 
the e-brake, when I pull the e-brake up, there's no light on the dash, which is super easy because I can pull the dash out. I don't even have it screwed in right now. You can see the screws right here. I got an LED bulb. I'm gonna go play with that. I think I just took the wrong bulb out. So I'll do that and then that is it. And then he said the, um, the VIN code on the engine has a little bit of grease and grime on it. So I'm gonna hit it with some degreaser, scrub it because he has to see 4G63 on it. Uh, and then that should be it. So these are really easy fixes. I just have to find smaller wheels so I gotta find a set of rims that I can borrow. So I'm gonna be on the hunt for that, but all this other stuff I can fix and try to get it done this afternoon. Honestly, the Evo came through. I cannot believe it. I thought I was gonna have a whole bunch of stuff to do, but literally easy, easy, easy fixes. Like minimal amount of money. I have to buy like a little shifter indicator. I have degreaser at the house. I'm probably gonna have to spend maybe, I don't know, five bucks. So very happy, very pleased. So I'm gonna go get the headlights adjusted real quick and we'll pick back up. All right guys, so I'm at Typhoon Motors right now. It is a auto hobby shop here on the Marine base and they have a junkyard in the back. So right now my goal is to find a sticker with a shift indicator for five speed that I can throw in the Evo in the meantime and maybe anything else. I, I gotta find these wheels. So if there's any cars here that have five by one, one, four point three and they look like maybe seven inches or less, I might have to pull them. We'll see, but let's see what we can find around the junkyard. Hey, right off the bat, Sylvia S15. I'm wondering if it was manual. Automatic. It's not doing me any good. But here's an S15 Spec S, so it did not have the SR20 DET in it. But hey, it's a Sylvia. So I think the hardest part is going to be finding manual cars around here. And then finding a manual car that will have a shift knob. So I know B4s. There's a lot of B4s. I made these in a five speed, so we'll see if there's any shifters. No, nope, automatic, automatic. It's just kind of shot in the dark right now. Probably 99% of these cars are gonna be automatic. Just gotta get lucky. I see another B4, check that out. How about this Pajero? Automatic. Come on, automatic. Damn. Yeah, it looks like everything's automatic over here. Here's an Alteza. Majority of these are automatic. Yep. Damn. Wait a minute. Hey, and we are in a Mitsubishi. I'm wondering if I could just slap this bad boy on there. Ooh, this might be the one. It is the same shift pattern as the Evo. So we'll see if it fits. And that is coming from a Mitsubishi Pajero Mini. Thank you, donor car, if you fit. We'll try it out. I'm sure the guy will let me put it on the car and see if it'll fit before I purchase it. Shift knob, honestly, it's not even that bad. And I see a skyline. We'll take a quick peep. R33. I know these are five speeds, but this one is automatic. Yeah, nothing, nothing good in here. But hey, the shift knob, this might get the job done. Here's the R32 right there. But I don't know. I apologize for the car being so dirty. So we're now gonna take my aftermarket shift knob here and try to put this Mitsubishi Mini Pajero one on, so. So I just fed that through like that and then look at that, hell yeah. And as you guys can see, we got the shift pattern numbers on there clearly visible yeah I think this is gonna be the one for JCI right here and then I'll just keep that in the glove box for uh, for future inspections this will be the JCI shift knob from a Mitsubishi Pajero so I'm gonna go inside give them the money for it and then we're gonna get out of here so I'm trying to get the whole wheel situation uh, taken care of I'm down in Miyagi's junkyard you guys might remember this place from some of the junkyard videos I'm over here in their wheel and rim section and this guy literally asked him if he had any wheels he's gonna let me rent 
a set of wheels. I don't really care what they are, but the offset's gonna be a little bit smaller. So it should pass JCI tomorrow as far as the wheels go. So he's pulling off my Mitsubishi OZ racing wheels that I have on here. And he's putting on, I really don't even know what they are right now, but uh, we'll, see what, we'll see what the car looks like after. They actually have some pretty decent wheels in here. I don't know how much this is gonna cost, but uh, I'll update. He's mounting everything right now, and he's a uh, he's a beast. So. Pick back up once uh, once we have all four wheels on. All right, so the Evo is all finished up, but since I'm already here at Miyagi's, I'm just gonna run through and see if there's any cool cars to scope out. And immediately, I see a JZX 100. Just gonna loop around. I know you guys enjoy the Miyagi's videos. And I do want to say I apologize for shooting on my uh, my iPhone. I didn't have my camera with me today. I didn't really plan on making a video. And when I was in the inspection line, I just decided, hey, might as well make a video. So hopefully it's better than nothing and you guys will forgive me. And uh, next video, I'll have my camera. There's another JZX100 right up there. I'm not even kidding. They really just don't care what kind of car it is. If it gets turned in here, it's getting smashed. I see a... Impreza WRX right there, some Altezas. Subaru V4. Miyagi's is actually closing up here in a minute too, so I can't make this too long. Typical bunch of V4s. Subaru wagon. Ooh, wait a minute. There's always something here. See if I can get around, squeeze through here. There's a GC8 WRX next to a Mazda Protege. Check this out. It's got a Mazda Speed exhaust on it. Or here it is a Familia, Mazda Familia. Some racing heart rims. Man, this thing is gutted. This did not last at all. Look at this thing, panels, doors. I'm gonna climb up on the ladder real quick. There is nothing left. There's a clutch pedal. I don't know if that's worth anything to any of you guys. And this thing has been stripped. The part of the back seat is still intact. Tail lights, everything are gone. There's a lot of Subaru owners out here, so I'm sure as soon as they caught wind, it's like a feeding frenzy. There's a Toyota Crown, I believe. Some front clips. All right, guys, I'm gonna head back to the Evo. We'll pick back up tomorrow and hopefully get this JCI done once and for all, trying to knock it out. Not gonna lie, the Evo, no matter what wheels you put on it, it still looks good. I don't even know what wheels these are. I don't even know where they came from. There's no center caps, but the, uh, the offset is definitely different. So we can just see right here. The issue I was having was the wheels were sticking out too far, but obviously now that is not the case. Look at that wheel gap. Hey, I'll take it though. All right, guys, this is the moment of truth right here. I got everything else passed, but we're working on the headlights. And I got the gentleman who adjusted my headlights. He's standing right next to me with the inspector. And they're both kind of like going back and forth on my headlights right now. So we shall see. I think he's trying to, trying to wing it, trying to work with me right now. We'll see. So the only thing holding me back right now, and they're both arguing over it. So this machine, so this machine right here, it moves out in front of the headlights and it'll pretty much find where the beam is at and then uh, tell you if, you if you're too high or too low. So these two guys are literally just going to town. They got all hands on deck right now. All right, so I got the OEM headlights put back on the Evo.
so JCI is starting to get a little frustrating. It was going real smooth. I was like, okay, headlights easy. I'll pay the 15 bucks. But we are still, we're having issues and it's lunchtime. So now they're closed for the inspection, which means I'm gonna have to wait another hour if we do get this squared away. So moving along, hopefully get this figured out by today. I do not want to have to come back down here tomorrow. So we'll let you know. All right, we are back at it again after the alignment. Hopefully third time's a charm. So the machine's doing its thing. I see green, I think green means good. He's coming over to the right side. However, the right side was a little iffy. Sorry, I'm getting glare. Please be green. Green. Good to go. Hell yeah, JCI baby. Stamp it. All right, great news. I got my JCI inspection right here. You guys will see the 33. You just subtract 12, that's the Hasey year, I think that's how you pronounce it, so you subtract 12 from that number, and that's the expiration date, which is 2021, April 2nd, so the JCI is good for two more years. So I'm gonna put the sticker in the window, and I am fully compliant to drive the Evo on the road, and I am I am so happy. A uh, few hiccups, but overall, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. A lot of people made it sound like it's the worst thing about being stationed in Japan, the dreaded JCI, and you know, it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg. I've heard horror stories of people saying they spent 800, 1,000, 1,200 dollars taken to a shop. But for me, I feel like shops sometimes will add a little bit, you know, of unnecessary things here and there and additional labor charges and all that. So I am living proof that you can get JCI, especially on an older car. The Evo is 24 years old and I was able to go through in about a day, day and a half. I could have been a little bit more persistent and got it done yesterday but I didn't feel like driving back and forth, but I had to come back today anyways, so I just waited until today. Hiccup with the headlights, lesson learned. So if you do have aftermarket headlights, uh, in my case, I'm pretty sure they're Mirage headlights off a US spec car. So the driver's side headlight on the right-hand side, the, the beam was kind of pointing upwards because in America, we drive on the right-hand side of the road, so you want the beam to be pointed up to the right to hit the, uh, the signs as you're driving towards them at night. Obviously, driving on the left side of the road, that, that means I'm pointing the headlights right at oncoming drivers, which obviously we don't want. So, uh, lesson learned on that, but hey, I passed, and today's a good day. Thanks for watching. Comment below. Hopefully, this video helps some of you out that are here in Okinawa, or you're going to get stationed in Okinawa. Trust me, it's not that bad. I promise you. Uh, like I said before, sorry for the iPhone quality. I know the audio is probably pretty crappy, and it's pretty shaky. I've, I've just been holding it with my hand. I'm kind of improv in the video for you guys but i'm trying to get a video and hopefully i help some of you guys out there so if i help you comment below throw me a like subscribe if you're new to the channel and stay tuned for more jdm car content and i'll see y'all later on the next one bye